How's everybody doing out there? I am so excited. It is a true honor and privilege to be here, um, part of Behind the Chair Live. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Yurish Hooker, and I am the Global Director of Development for Purology. Um, today, I'm gonna be uh, cutting a shag haircut. Uh, wow, what an amazing, versatile look. Something that fits on everyone, actually. Um, all we need to do is make sure that we are conscientious and thoughtful in the type of lengths that we're gonna be utilizing around the face um, and the type of movement. We always want to take into account the type of hair texture for expansion, for reversion. We're sitting here um, on a roof in New York City. Uh, so we want to make sure that we take humidity into account because that is a major factor when we're dealing with summertime in the city. Um, I think some things that are super important before we really get into this haircut is I like to always take a nod to history before we move forward because to truly understand what's happening with the trend today, I think it's important that we understand a little bit of its history and its beginnings. So the shag haircut um, initially is credited to be first cut in 1971 on uh, Jane Fonda by Paul McGregor, I believe. And um, one of the amazing things about it, and in the time, and this is very important because as everything is, it moves and it shifts and uh, it becomes reinvented and modernized as, uh, it, as time progresses. So um, one of the things that it was was there's a lot of movement in the front, moving toward length in the back. Another major feature of uh, the first shags that were cut on many people, Joan Jett, uh, Mick Jagger was uh, Joan Jett, uh, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, uh, David Bowie, uh, there are a number of people, and it crossed all, uh, whether it be male or female, totally didn't matter. Um, and this was something that was really important. So um, in the modernizing of it, it's a little bit different. As you can see, my amazing model, let me move her hair so that she can say hello, Genesis, look at that, yes. This is my amazing model, Genesis. You know, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Awesome. <laughs> you know, hey, you know what I mean? I definitely want to say hi because, you know, it's our clients, it's our models, and it's the people that allow us to create on their hair that make our work always look so great and shine, yeah? So, uh, with that said, I think it's really important that we take a little bit of a nod. She's a perfect example of how we're going to utilize some of the more modern principles or different principles. Let me not say modern because it's nothing's uh, right or wrong. It's either working or not working, right? Um, so I can say that what I'm going to be taking into account is I'm going to be taking into account our length. Um, we already cut the length prior to this. So I think that's important. And in doing so, I utilized the signature uh, sectioning patterns from the Purology Essential Design Haircutting System. So I began with a nape section that starts at right at the low occipital to the mastoid process. I brought the length in, I cut that in with the head tilted down so that when it came, when her head tilted up, we had a slightly rounded angle so that it would connect to the roundness of the shag look, all that movement, all of that layering moving through the front, shift and, and, and pushing the weight moving back, yeah? Um, and then we did a midsection and we sectioned this out again to the Purology Essential Design hair cutting system. We started at the low crown. And in this instance, I made sure I sectioned that uh, horseshoe section to what is the mid -rece uh, recession, actually. And this will be where we begin with a longer fringe. Why? Uh, we're talking about expansion. Uh, we're, as I said, we're cutting this on a rooftop. As you notice, her hair is dry. Um, there was a lot of blow dry that uh, took place with this. Um, just so that I could cut it and give it that look, yeah? But I also know that she's got a lot of hair. I also know that it can have a tendency or uh, a capability to frizz. So I wanna make sure that there's a certain amount of length and weight so that as the humidity of this amazing city uh, and as Genesis is walking through this amazing city during all of this humidity and all of this heat, that it doesn't turn into a crazy situation for her. Remember too, something that's so important about the shag haircut is um, its look and its magic comes out most when the look is actually undone. It's supposed to give a look of almost you cut it yourself, but uh, but in the right way, yeah? And that's always so important when we're uh, creating any look on anyone. And so with that said, I want to make sure that this honors her natural texture. I want her to not have to fight her hair, right? Life is hard enough. Do we need to fight with hair too? I don't think so. And uh, in doing so, you'll see a lot of the principles that I'll be using, low elevations, 
um, a certain amount of over direction so that length can swing out. And I'll be sharing with you certain pure design cutting techniques as well that are the signature pieces that are um, how we put our own stamp on the work, where we curate it to the individual client as well. So we'll be doing the two things. Um, we'll be dealing with the essential design sectioning and we'll be dealing with the pure design signature techniques that really bring it home for each and every single one of our clients. Because as we all know, this is a one size fits one business, not a one size fits all. Okay, so the length has already been completed and now I'm going to start that shag magic uh, moving through the front. I already have, do me a favor Genesis, tilt a little and tilt down. I already have a triangular section uh, sectioned off right in the front top, um, about two and a half inches back deep. I don't want a ton of fringe. There we go up again. And then I ended it at her mid recession areas. Okay, because what I wanted to make sure happened, she's got a lot of hair. I wanted to make sure that it had a certain amount of width to it so that it would actually open up her face. Remember, the hair is the frame for the face, yeah? And this becomes so, so very important whenever we're working with any uh, texture hair. We want to make sure that people look at our clients and say, what a beautiful person with a great haircut. Yeah? And that's really what's so important within this moment. So, we begin, we're going to start with a center section. And this bit, I'm going to be utilizing a pretty high, uh, 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 a good amount of elevation and over direction as I cut, yeah? So I'll start right here. I'll take it down to the lips to make sure that I know where I'm going, yeah? All right. And it's a little windy out here, so it's a little challenging, but it's going to make this haircut really come to life immediately, so I'm excited to do it, yeah? Awesome, awesome. So, that's it. Okay, my section. Ready, boom. Got my length there. Checked it, right? But I also want to move it to the side of it because she doesn't wear hair directly over her face. It's off to the side. So I want to make sure that that length is right on target for her. And then I move it back into position and I begin to cut. Again, I want to make sure that I'm cutting soft. So as you see, it's over directed away from where it's naturally going to fall. There we go. It's not totally slide cut. I want some precision in it, but as you can see, I want a little bit of looseness. So I brought that to the table as well, yeah? There we go. Now I'll take a little bit from that first section. It will be my guide to length moving into the other side. Oop, I'm so sorry, Genesis. It's killing me up here with this wind. Forgive me, all right? Awesome. So there we go, out, out here, right? Over-directed, elevated up, not so heavy, yeah? And I use the other side as a guide and I do the exact same motion to the other side, yeah? Uh-oh, there's that cape happening, huh? Awesome. Now, I'm gonna make sure that I check my balance to make sure that I can move forward and everything is cool. And I see a little bit of a piece right here that I want to address. There we go, awesome. And now there's gonna be something that I'm gonna do that I think is a winner of a technique for the curtain bangs. And these are long curtain bangs ultimately, yeah? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this at a vertical here. And see, there's a nice strong corner right there. I'm going to make sure that I point cut that corner out so that as it grows out, it doesn't grow into that little, I like, I usually call it, interestingly enough, kind of like a bison horn, right? So what will happen is it'll collide with the side and you see those flippy bits that come out like that eventually over time. I think one of the major things that's so important as we cut our client's hair, is as we cut any client's hair or anyone's hair, is that we're always being conscientious that we're adding value to that price. All right, and the fact of the matter is, is I don't want uh, my clients here to just look good for the, for the moment they leave me in the salon. I want it to look good for months after, weeks after. In fact, I want my clients to be getting compliments with their, about their haircut when they're coming into the salon, not just when they're leaving it. And this is one of those things that buys a lot of time and actually allows that haircut to grow in so gracefully for every single one of our clients so that they don't have to struggle with their hair as it's growing out and we can give them the maximum amount of value for the price that they're paying for our artistry and for our work. It builds a lot of trust with our clients as well, yeah? And that's really what so much of our industry is about. And as you can see, I'm taking the corner off the other side as well and I'm point cutting it because I want it to be nice and soft so it doesn't collide with that side from graduation, yeah? Awesome, cool. Now, 
my next section that I'm going to take, and why don't I take it on this side so that you can actually see it, everybody out there. Oh, worth noting too, I forgot to mention this, but it bears mentioning. We have our mighty team at Purology. They're gonna be, they're man in the chat right now. Please give me your questions. They'll be there to answer it so that not only will you get just what I have to share, but you'll make sure that the time that you spend with us, you'll get all those gifts that you came here for, yeah? Because that's what's so important. I'm here to serve all of you, and I want you all to be able to take these techniques, to take this haircut, to take these looks, and actually be able to utilize it to increase your relationships with your clients, your connection with your clients, and to help you gain more revenue behind the chair. That's what this is all about. And be able to express yourself like the artist you are. So, the first section that we'll begin with, right? So right now, I have my apex right here at the fringe. And now, I am going to hope for the best here. I'm going to move this over here, and it's not going to pay attention to me, but that's okay. So there, I will clip it out of the way so that I'll be able to affect this easily for you. And I'll start right at the apex of this fringe. Look a little bit. Oh, yeah, there you go, Genesis. Like a yoga class. Fantastic, right? So we'll start here, and we'll be going right to the right before her ear. Why am I doing that as opposed to a uh, back diagonal section? Why? Because the one thing I want to make sure of when I'm doing all this is I don't want to make, I don't want to whack off the whole front. Remember. I put in my line utilizing that signature sectioning from the uh, essential design hair cutting system that is Purology. So I want to make sure that I keep my intention. So now I can keep control of what's in the front so that I don't have too much part, too much going on in the front and not enough happening in the back. Remember, we always have to pay attention to that balance as well. Yeah. So now I will release the curtain bangs that I did. And I will take a little bit of that section of the left, and that will be the beginning of where I start my forward graduation, my face framing, to really bring uh, the magic to the shag and bring all that movement, yeah? Now, a couple of different things. If this was finer hair, I might hold it down here. If it's hair that tends to reversion, I might hold it down here. Why? Because when I have it at this elevation, it's going to be heavier. And what that'll do is that it'll make sure that as the humidity hits it, as all these different things hit it, the weather, whatever, um, it doesn't become out of control as fast. Remember, in hair cutting, length is weight, and weight is control. And when we're holding it or in its position with a low elevation and, um, and not a ton of over direction, actually it becomes a little bit heavier. I'm going to split the balance on that because she's got a lot of hair, so I want to loosen it up and make it a little bit airier. However, um, I also want to be conscientious because her hair does have a tendency to um, actually revert and get frizzy. So I want to make sure that I avoid that. There's my guide from my fringe area. And I will begin to slide cut my forward graduation with an eye to that little bit that flew out of my fingers. But that's okay because I'm actually going to show you another technique that is a major winner. Can you see how there's a break in the density? There's a break in the density for everyone that winds up um, doing face framing, all right? And so consequently, a lot of clients will say that there's a hole through the front when that happens. I'm gonna give you go. This may be worth the price of admission right here, everybody, my friends. Check this out. So see, I can see where I ended this face framing bit right there. Now I'm going to take a little, I'm gonna take this bit a little bit higher and create negative space so that this bit can fit into it and continue that line and actually give the illusion that there is no hole, all right? So there we go. I'm gonna make it as a little marker. There's a lot of wind out here, yeah? There we are, perfect. And now I know where I will begin. There we go. And I will lightly, at a very low elevation, connect that through, okay? And what winds up happening is something that winds up looking like a continuous line. Okay? Now, I'm going to do the other side so that I have balance. Then I'm going to do one side, then I'm going to do the whole side, then I'm going to bring it home in the back. All right? Cool. And I'm also going to have to section this a little bit here to give myself control. So funny. You know, you think it's going to be a brilliant idea to do a haircut outside, and then it has its challenges. However, it's going to really come home, and I'm so excited to do this work, and I'm so excited to do this for Behind the Chair Live, 
and share these techniques, share these signature sectioning patterns, and share really a bit of um, really what is the Purology brand culture. And what it is is about taking care of our clients. It's about nature. It's about it's about being organic in the way we do things and, and working with the environment, not against it, and honoring all of those various different things. And this is so, so very important to us. It's important to our clients, and it's important to the culture of what Purology is all about. So, even though it's a little challenging, it's worth it, yeah? Awesome, cool. So now, I let down the wild side here. I'm gonna bring down my right side. I'm going to aim to have a little bit of control and take one of my many clips and put this out of the way here. And then I'm going to connect this uh, side section, face framing, in the same exact way I did the other. Now remember, what's so important with this and what allows me the ability to do this is the fact that I made sure that my first section was totally balanced. Remember, when that first section is balanced, you're positive that you can continue forward and not actually worry about balance moving on, even in these windy conditions, right? And that's why it's so important to take the extra time to make sure that you actually sort out where you are going to be doing uh, what your first sections are, because that will give you the hint as to what winds up happening with all of the other sections. It'll give you a hint as to whether your clients are moving their head because you know that the very first section you did is absolutely perfect. Yeah? Cool. All right, now we're off to the races, okay? Now we're gonna start taking some back diagonal sections. Oh, let's do this. Wanna make sure that I can see everybody and making sure that you can see what's going on, making sure you can see the action, all right? So a little back diagonal section right here. I will incorporate a little bit behind the ear. I'm going through the mastoid process. In the essential design sectioning pattern, I'm going through what would be the top section, the mid section, and into a little bit of that top of the nape section, okay? Three different sections that address different areas of the head, different widths within the head, recesses in the head, and um, protect against um, all of the different growth patterns that we've got going on. And I have to tell you all something, and I think this is really important while I'm getting this hair all under control. Um, I have something I have to share with you all. There's an amazing opportunity we have going on. And uh, right now, Purology is actually actively looking for artists to join our Pure family. Uh, so please, all of that information is on Canvas Me. Um, I have to tell you something. When it comes to education, education truly um, did change my life. Um, the ability to share what I know with other people, the ability to meet artists all over the world, and uh, the ability um, to truly create and uh, share something that I love has been a gift of mine um, that this industry and that uh, this brand has given me. Um, and I hope um, that all of you out there, um, if you so desire, um, at least check it out on Canvas Me, see what the opportunity is, and uh, we can't wait to meet you, yeah? All right, so now with that said, now I'm continuing on, all right? I have this at a fairly low elevation. Again, why? Because I'm being conscientious of reversion and all those various different things. I have my guide section, I can see it, and let us continue, huh? There we go, there we go. Always with an eye to where I am, but also an eye to where I'm going. What? Just like life, right? So we wanna make sure that I don't whack off the end. So I have to pay attention to this, but I also have to give myself enough room to get to the end without then giving her a very unbalanced haircut that is not my intention, all right? I understand that there's other looks like uh, mullets that are very hot right now, all good. I'm not mad at a mullet, right? However, let's cut it with intention. I don't wanna have an accidental mullet, if you know what I'm saying, yeah? Awesome, cool, all right? So then, I only cut what I can control in my hands. Oh, bring that all the way down. And I keep on slide cutting, all right? Now, mind you, this is some of the refinements that actually shifted what's going on with the shag right now. Oh, give them a little preview. Just give them, oh, what? Yes, let them have it. You know what I'm saying? So here, this is some of the differences that have come about with this look, okay? The layers are lower. There's not shorter sprouts up at the crown. This is one of the main things that was its signature when it was first um, cut in the 70s. 
as time has progressed, things have gotten a little bit longer, become a little bit more subdued, potentially. Again, you can still bring those sprouts back, just not in this instance. Again, because we want to make sure that this works, not just for the look, but for the client, right? We got to make sure that the client, Genesis, can style her hair. Can't have it dependent that I'm the only one that can make it look good. I want her to be able to make it look good. So I want to take all of these things into account, yeah? Awesome. There we go. Perfect. And now I'll keep taking these back diagonal sections until I run out of hair. Now, one thing that is important, I want to make sure that when I get to that area that separates out the front from the back, see, here's the mastoid process, okay? This bone is very important. In fact, let me, uh, uh, uh. This bone right here, very important. This bone is what separates on everyone what wants to live in the back from what wants to live in the front. So when it comes to that, I'll take a horizontal line that will cut through that midsection of the essential design cutting system and the uh, top section of the essential design cutting system. And I will make sure that from that point, it will pivot like this. I won't just keep cutting like this, otherwise my back will flow awkwardly, yeah? So it goes back diagonals until you hit where, where that line, where it separates front from back, and then it will begin to pivot until I run out of hair with a vertical part down the center back, yeah? Awesome, here we are, back diagonal, there we go, great. All right. There, same thing, keeping track of my elevation, keeping track of my over direction. Also worth noting, I think that it's really important that as we're doing this, you could also, if I wanted to, I could keep on elevating it actually. And um, if I wanted a little bit lighter, I do not. I'm going to be connecting the layering through the top and the midsection actually um, in the back. That's another thing that's a shift from uh, the initial uh, shads to what's going on today. Uh, truth of the matter is, the back used to have very little movement, ton of movement in the front. I want to create a little bit more balance in that movement as well. Yeah? Cool. There we are. And there we go. Only cut what you can control, my friends. Don't start cutting made up hair. Very important. There we go. Yeah, a lot of movement happening there. Feeling good about it. There, see, now it will, you know, just so you can see. So, ah, oh, there you go, Genesis, see? Now we'll use that as a point. And then I'll start extending it out like that until I hit that uh, uh, vertical section right down the center back, yeah? And then I'll work on the other side. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. All right, cool. And we're back to where we began, right? There. Now, mind you, see how I'm doing this? I'm doing it um, not really quick, right? You can cut pretty much a straight line if you do it quick enough like this in slide cutting. I'm doing it a little bit more looser so I get a little bit more texture in it, yeah? And that's the way that'll work and it'll allow for a little bit more looseness within it. And as um, Genesis is styling her own hair, it won't be so dependent on really blunt lines, however, it will have that solid technique, that strong structure that will actually allow it to grow out gracefully so that again, she's getting compliments as she's coming in to see me, not just only when she is leaving. And I must share with you all my friends, New York City is hot, hot, hot right now. So I know that I'm sweating a little bit, um, but it's all good. I'm not sweating because I'm nervous. I'm sweating because it's 2000 degrees out here right now. That's what's happening, yeah? <laughs> cool, all right? There we go. I hope you're all enjoying what I'm sharing right now. Um, I think what's also super important is to really um, focus on some of these products that I've used. If we could get some products over here, actually, my amazing crew is gonna hook me up with that. I know I have a mighty crew behind me. I know all you see is me and Genesis, but of course, nothing ever happens when we're by ourselves. It only happens when we all work together, yeah? So within that, let me share with you I first made sure that I set it up with a little bit of Color Fanatic, really important. Um, use it as a cutting lotion. I use it a lot with my razor work. 
Um, and actually, it helps preserve the color. And it's an amazing thing that puts a little bit of moisture, a little bit of weight, and actually serves clients so well, especially with this texture and this amount of hair. It really helped me blow dry it out perfectly. And as you can see, I really must tell you, if you were here, you would know how humid and you would know how hot it is. And it is an absolute Christmas miracle in the summertime that it is actually remaining this smooth. And this is a part of that magic. Secondly, when I was making sure that I was blow drying it, I used a little bit of the Shine Bright Taming Serum. This was super important because again, it helps fight that humidity um, and it helps smooth it, keeping it smooth as I'm blow drying. Now it's worth noting that all of these products, when, when Genesis goes to style her hair, these are all things that she can use and put in her hair and actually they'll help keep it tame. And Genesis, you can air dry it when you put this stuff in and it'll be all good because none of it is going to dry crunchy. All right, it'll add a little bit of weight. It'll add a little bit of that smoothness. It'll add a little bit of that control so that she won't have to go through the blow dry that I did. She can just put this stuff in, comb it through, scrunch it up, and she'll be ready to roll and capitalize on a lot of that natural movement and wave that she already has going on. I'll give you a bonus. Everybody out there say bonus. All right, so check this out. Now what I did is before we came out here, I used a little, a lot actually of soft finish hairspray throughout section by section. Why? Hairspray, amazing anti-humectant. Anti so I sprayed it in a little bit in anticipation of all of this to help keep it under control. And it's giving me a little bit more control in my fingers as I'm working with the hair, with the comb, with the, with the scissors, so that I can cut amidst apparently a windstorm on a New York City roof. Yeah, perfect, all right? So those are some of the things that I use today for this particular look, yeah? Cool. All right, and now I'm going to make sure that this all locked in because I don't want to take anything for granted. And I got so hyped talking about the products I use. I want to make sure that I didn't skip a step here. And there's a little Lucy, so either way, I'm glad I double checked. So there we go. Ooh, Genesis, I'm, you were just, can we all, everybody, I want to see some clappy hands in that chat room for the superstar Genesis over here. Genesis, give him a look. Yes. Do you see what's going on? She's got hair in her face and she's holding it down like a champ. Best model ever. Thank you so much for being a part of this adventure with me, Genesis. I appreciate you. Awesome. Now, let me double check all the way down to the bottom. Cool. And now I have just one more section on this side. There we go. Let me not take that for granted. In today's windy moment, I will section up the other side. And now I will bring this. See how I'll comb it all the way, but honoring the, what, the roundness of her head. Now worth noting, I can cut shorter layers to the back if I comb it all forward like that. See how that winds up? over directing it a little bit more, allowing me to cut a little bit more length. But remember her length, her texture, all of those various different things, keeping that all into account. And I'm working with the template of her head, combing into place. And there's my hair. And then I'll do a little bit of my slide cutting, keeping it nice and loose. And Genesis is such a rock star because the hair is all over her face and she's saying nothing. You're amazing, Genesis, thank you. And I will peek over here to make sure that I have all the hairs because remember, there's no excuses. I may be on a roof and it may be windy. Genesis still needs a perfect haircut and I'm here for that. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't let anything fall through the cracks and I don't take anything for granted. All right, there we go. Oh, and there's a little bit right there, see? Holding myself to account. Could have gotten away with it, but as we all know, we all never get away with anything. All right, because in the end, the work shows it, the amount of time that the haircut will look real beautiful on our clients will show it. And quite frankly, that's no way to build a relationship of trust and of true connection than by trying to get away with little sneaky bits. Yeah, cool, awesome. So off to the other side. I hope you all are enjoying this technique and I hope you all are utilizing this time as we're all coming back to our salons, as things are getting getting a little bit more back to life here, I hope all of you are experiencing some major, major um, successes and and, and, and and a lot of joy getting back to uh, what we all love. 
Um, and it's so important. It's so great when I'm talking to um, all of my clients that I that I mentor, that I coach, um, fellow artists, teams all over the country. I think it's so important. And in hearing all of their stories and just being so grateful to reconnect with those clients, to be able to 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 take ooh, look at that. What? Yes, win. All right, perfect. There we go. But however. I said, yes, when, but I'm going to have to clip it up because it's invading my other side. So we're going to have to do that for a little bit of a moment. And you're going to have to rock this. And I will put this right there. Perfect. All right. Great. So, you know, when it comes down to it, how much did we all miss these relationships of our clients? And, uh, and this is really so important. When we at Purology believe so strongly in the relationship. We at Purology believe so strongly in what it is to serve. We at Purology believe um, how much each and every one of us uh, mean to each other. And we all believe that really what we do for each other and how we serve each other and how we serve this planet um, within that is so, so very important. And it is so amazing that we actually have the opportunity to do this. And I have to tell you something, what's also really incredible about getting back to the salon is to hear all of these stories and experiences that all of our clients have been having um, uh, behind, you know, during all of this time. Now, I got to tell you something, though. You want to make sure that you're protecting your own energy while all of this is happening, because not everybody's been having a ride in the park, and not everybody's been having uh, like months off vacation. This has been difficult for a lot of people. So, what I might suggest, which is really important. And this is perhaps one of the main wellness tips that I could ever give anyone. And make no mistake, my friends, when it comes to wellness, Purology is a leader in it. We have amazing programs. We have uh, Protect Your Environment, Grow Your Business. We have Inner Peace, Outer Prosperity. Um, these are all programs that actually share how to not only take care of your clients, but how to take care of yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, you can't take care of a genesis unless you have taken care of yourself first. Remember, that begins here, not here. And now I'm open to truly connect and truly build those relationships that are what really matters in our business. I frequently say this, my friends, and, and, and please quote me on this. We're not in the hair business, we're not in the beauty business, we're in the relationship business. And when it comes down to it, this is why we need to show up for ourselves so that we can show up for every single relationship and every single client that sits in our chair in the way that their loyalty deserves. So when our clients are coming into the salon and as they're sharing their stories and as they're, they're, they're coming back super excited to have those connections again, right? Make sure that you're listening more than you're talking, yeah? Save that energy, all right? And I'll tell you something else that's so amazing about it is as you listen, as you ask questions about what their experience has been, as opposed to sharing what yours has been, you're gonna have one thing is going to be so profound. You are gonna create connection, you're gonna create relationships, and you're gonna create um, a type of trust that actually only that type of comfortability and that type of openness, creating the space for the client to step into so that you're, they're, you're not sharing your journey, but allowing them the space to share theirs. And as you can see, I'm doing the exact same thing on this side as I did on the other side, okay? I'm using my guide underneath to be my guide moving forward. I'm using um, wider uh, slide cutting, um, right? As I move down the hair strand. And as it stands right here, you can't see it, but on this side too, I have those back diagonal sections that are about to begin pivoting um, in this next section, actually, because I am at that place where actually we are about, yeah, I'm gonna cut up a little bit so I get those little guys, but I'm also point cutting into it, yeah? Super important, okay? Awesome. Perfect. Right, there, pivot those sections. Oh, I may have cut myself a little bit, and of course I'm on a roof, but here we go and we did not plan for that. But that's life and we will keep on going because that is what we do, right? Perfect. Keep on going down, keep on going down. There you go. All right, 
There we go. And there we are. And now we move up the hair strand over here. Perfect. I'll tell you something though. One of the worst things I ever did was actually cut a client, not, <laughs> not myself. And that I did many years at the beginning of my career because I actually was doing barbering and it was very difficult to actually uh, do my scissor and become, I was very nervous, yeah. But I think it's always important that these are all things that allow us to learn and grow on our journey to being the professionals that we actually uh, are, right? It's never uh, what we do in our most perfect moments that matter most. It's what we do um, during those moments that have adversity that matter the most when the chips are down, yeah? Awesome, right? And I am keep on working and I keep on cutting. There we go, all right? And there we go, and there we go. As you can see, I just keep on working this technique all the way down, there we are. All right, and now here is my last section. Remember, I have a vertical section going down the center back, okay? And now that section is going to be brought all the way forward, all right? And what that's going to wind up doing is it is going to make sure that there is a way that this will all connect in the back. There'll be a little corner back there, and what will wind up happening is I'll take that away in the back layering that I will do through the top, and through the midsection, as I was sharing with you, that is such an essential part of the essential design haircutting system of Purology. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And again, I don't want to take anything for granted. I go all the way down to the ends. And there's a little bit right there. See, there's a little bit. Right, again, it's either perfect or it's not happening. There we go. All right, now I will release this side. And I will section off my front from my back. I look here, do me a favor, tilt a little bit like this. Now what I do see, I move the hair around a little bit and it tells me where it wants to section off and where it wants to separate out from front and back, yeah? There we go. And remember, all roads end at that mastoid process and I have my index finger at the mastoid process and then I'm able to split to get that perfect section every single time, all right? There we are. And I am a huge believer in clips, okay? Clip it out of the way so you can control it. Even wind aside, okay? <laughs> perfect, 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 perfect. Now I'll do the same thing on this side. Get that symmetry so that I am organized. Organized space, organized mind, and good precision haircuts. I have never seen a haircut that was cut sloppily, be grow out well, or be done with precision. Remember, all of that stuff begins with our sectioning so that we have awareness, yeah? Now, I will start with a center vertical section down the back, and this is how I will add a little bit of magic here to the back so that I can bring some movement to the back and it's not just all in the front. I will also take a little bit of this. See, remember, that's my bit that I did in the forward graduation, yeah? And this will be my guide to length when it comes to the layers in the back. Okay. Do me a favor. Can you stand up for me, Genesis? Uh-oh. Plot twist. There we go. Perfect. Sit back down. There you go. I believe and I find it easiest to cut from short to long, actually. And again, like I say, I want to make sure that this is true precision. So, there we are. There's my guy, is right here, right? There, and now. And of course the wind blew all the hair in my face and it's sweating, it's sticking to my sweating face. And that's okay, I'm gonna keep on going because it's, I already have a beard 
Genesis, you just added a little bit more hair to my face. It's all good. I'm, I'm open to it. All right? Perfect. In fact, I wish I could take Genesis hair, glue it on my own head. I'll leave here with a full head of hair, actually, and it'd be fantastic, right? There we are. Okay, and this is part, there we go, see? And I've cut it at a nice concave angle. And what this is gonna do is even though I'm cutting it blunt, it'll fall nice and soft over everything that's on top of it so that when it comes down to it, you won't be able to see as layers will be seamless and it's smarter, not harder, because I won't have to do any point cutting to, re to get rid of any potential weight lines, yeah? All right, and I'm doing this over directing to the previous. Remember, I'm just connecting uh, the back to the front now, yeah? Next time I gotta talk to my purology crew, I should probably get like a little stepping stool for this type of a haircut. It'll help me a lot, you know, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Whoever had a client where you needed a stepping stool to actually cut them, yeah? Awesome, I know I wasn't the only one. All right, I remember having that happen to me a couple of times, actually, yeah? There we go, there we go. Awesome, now, section number two gets over-directed to section number one. And there we go, see? Guide as plain as the nose on your face. There you go, perfect, boom. Now I take section number two, I section out section number one. Section number three gets over-directed to section number two. And there we are. Hairy face. All right, there we go. Everybody check this out. I'm gonna do a couple of texturizing techniques as well, okay, using those pure design techniques that I was talking about that are gonna add a little bit of the signature. Do me a favor. Tilt. You know what? No, 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 just tilt a little bit. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, see? See all the movement? All right, see? And again, like I'm telling you, we must be at like 300% humidity and like 8 million degrees. And I have to tell you something, that when we're looking at this, and we're looking at what it could actually be created and what it could withstand, it is profound beyond belief. And I'm so happy for the Purology products that have allowed this to take place and that have kept this true. And remember something that's also worth noting, because of the low elevation, because of some of the over direction, that over direction, along with the low elevation, allowed for that soft flow. You're welcome. <laughs> allowed for that soft flow, but also allowed for that certain amount of weight so that it would help avoid reversion and actually honor her natural texture. Yeah? Cool. So, a couple of opportunities that I see. One, you see this little bit right through the front? What I'd like to do is I'd like to utilize a little bit of what we call external feathering, right? Pure design technique. So I will hold the hair like so, and I will move from, actually this is internal feathering. We will move from the inside out, and this will help lighten it up, and it will also help encourage direction, right? Short hair always pushes long, okay? There we go. Ooh, ooh. it's floating already, how fabulous, all right? Okay. All right, there's that. Now let's be, remember, you do it the one side, please. Well, let me not say that. Make sure you do it where it's needed. Don't just like one side, the other side. Remember, it's not a, it's a one size fits one business, not a one size fits all business, yeah? Right? So with that said, I want to make sure that I'm honoring that, but she has pretty much a lot of hair everywhere. So in this instance, it is true that you can do one side and then the other side, and then that lightens it up. Now what I also might do now, I might lift up some of these pieces right in the middle. There we go. And do some external feathering. Lift this up a little bit. Another pure design technique, yeah? Getting some of this interior weight out of this fringe area will be so relevant. And if you notice, as I do it, I'm spinning it away from her face because I want it to flow off of her face. This is all relevant, yeah? Everything we do with hair makes a huge difference no matter what, all right? 
where we choose to cut something, whether it's angle to the left, angle to the right, all of those things matter when it comes to the way the hair acts, see, right? Uh-oh, there we go, right there. Spin it away. Get rid of some of that density, yeah? These are the signature techniques that ultimately will define your work as your work and your client's haircut as your client's haircut, right? This is so, so very important. We don't want a one-size-fits-all type of haircuts. We need one-size-fits-one haircuts, yeah? So that every bit of our work is being done in a way that is only specifically for our clients, right? I'm gonna do a little bit more of that uh, pure design technique through the front. Look at all of this opportunity right here, right? When I see this, and perhaps that camera could get in a little closer here. See that density? I'm jealous of it because I don't have any. However, I want it to be a little bit lighter for her. It's also going to help the grow out. So again, I'm looking, where am I going? Where am I going? I want to accent her face, right? I want this to frame the face, right? So there you go. Then I pick up what else needs density, okay? Or what else needs lightening because I can see it, all right? Remember, let's be present while we're working. This is another thing that, to be quite honest with you, is a matter of wellness as well. Quite frankly, we're often waiting for the next client. Don't worry about the next client. Worry about the one that's in your chair. Be present to that, all right? It's gonna help you. It's gonna help your relationships. It's gonna help your business. It's gonna help your connection. And it's actually gonna honor the person that's in your chair because that, 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 that level of level of loyalty through all of this, that that all of the all of the friends that they've referred to you, this all commands that, yeah? See? Very dense. Doing the same type of thing, right? There we go. These pure design techniques are, are, are pure gold, right? Because they really do give you these ways that you can really personalize your work and really make sure that your client feels as though you've taken that extra care extra time to really make that haircut um, their haircut yeah there we go more density right here do me a favor bring that camera in a little closer until there see you can see dense not dense dense right so I'll take this right. there see there, there. And I look for the patches that need to be loosened up. I don't loosen up everything, yeah? And this is just around the face. There, let me clip that there so that it doesn't move into the section. You never want to double texturize, right? Very, very important when we're doing our work, yeah? There we go. Okay, I'm gonna need another clip. Fortunately, I've got 80 trillion of them on my shirt, so it totally works. There we go, there we go. Right here. Now, if you notice this hair on top of the hair that's behind the uh, curtain bang, curtain fringe, I'm actually carving towards the face. I'm doing my internal feathering towards the face, yeah? Because remember, I want this stuff off, and then I want this stuff a little bit of the weight moving forward. There's always a length balance, and then there's a density balance. And this is something that we forget. There's got to be a balance between front and back, not just like side and side. All right? So while I want this to go off of the face, that's why I did the uh, internal feathering away. Now I do this stuff, this internal feathering towards, so that I can encourage some density here, so that it doesn't seem like there's eight times more hair in the back and none up here, yeah? Becomes very pointed, especially when we're dealing with our clients with a lot of density, like Genesis here has, yeah? Very, very important. Keep that in mind. Equalize out the density. Don't just texturize everything, right? Texturize what needs to be texturized, not just everything because that's what it seems like it needs to be doing. Look for the density, look for where it's thick, look for where it's thin, avoid where it's thin, and adjust where it's thick, yeah? Awesome, okay. There we go, there we go. I almost lost the clip in your hair, Genesis. <laughs> All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do with Genesis right now is I'm gonna finish up with just a little bit of a texturizing spray 
because I think this is a huge tool. Beach Waves Sugar Spray, all right? This is gonna be something that I'm gonna spray, I'm gonna scrunch in, and we're gonna start seeing that separation and that magic. And you'll be able to use this too, Jenna says. You can spray it in a wet hair or dry hair, scrunch it up, it'll do its own thing, yeah? Cool, now do me a favor. So your head back for me. Now remember, whenever we're using these type of products, we wanna make sure that we're spraying up into the hair, yeah? Or up into the wind, look at that, how amazing. All right, there we go. Tilt to the side for me. Perfect. There we go, other side. Dip it back. Pro tip. A little bit on your hands, right around that hairline, scrunch it up. What do you think? I know you gotta love Genesis at a bare minimum, all right? Thank you so much for joining me. Please give Genesis some hearts, give her some thumbs up, give her some hands up, give her some shout outs in that chat box. Let her know that you appreciate her time. Let her know that you appreciate her contribution. And please, again, we're looking for new artists to join our family. Please be sure to check out Canvas Me, or you can go in the, uh, in the bio of Purology and actually the opportunity, the link is there as well. Please, this type of thing, serving people, meeting amazing models, um, working with an amazing crew that you can't see, and I'm making new amazing friends all over this world actually, has changed my life profoundly. I hope we get to meet you, and I hope you uh, say yes to this invitation and opportunity. Take care everyone, have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you dug the cut and I hope you use these techniques for your clients and to build your revenue and to create those relationships that make each and every single one of us successful. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Pass.